Okay, uh, in today's class, uh, I am going to discuss uh, a new subtopic uh, which is Navier Stokes equation. So, like I told you earlier, uh, so till now what we have been discussing is the properties of fluids uh, and a description of uh, fluid flow when uh, there is no internal friction or viscosity. So, we have assumed that the fluids are ideal in that sense, namely that uh, uh, there is no uh, dissipative internal friction. So, that is one uh, reason why uh, uh, what we have been discussing is not particularly uh, um, realistic. So, for example, you know the fluids that we have discussed, uh, suppose you uh, take a uh, glass of water and you uh, put your finger inside and give it a spin, uh, the water inside your glass will keep spinning. But then you, you would have noticed that after a while uh, it will stop spinning. So, there are two reasons for that. One is because there is a friction between the water and the glass itself and the second reason is there is also internal friction between the layers of the fluid. So, we have ignored those things uh, till now. So, we should be discussing especially the internal friction between the layers of the fluid is something we should discuss because uh, any uh, phenomenon that uh, uh, you know if you start some process that process will not go on indefinitely in a dissipative system it will die down after a while so that is typically what we notice in uh, realistic fluids so we should be discussing uh, those type of phenomena as well okay so how do we discuss that so, we discussed that by uh, modeling the fluid uh, as follows. So, imagine you have uh, three layers. So, you have the kth layer and the layer above that which I have uh, denoted as k plus 1. So, uh, just look at this figure here. So, you see uh, there is a layer here which is the layer of interest and uh, the layer of interest has a layer below and a layer above also. So, that is k plus 1 is above, k minus 1 is below. So, now uh, the point is that because uh, these layers are in contact with each other, okay, so they will you know transfer momentum. So, basically what will happen is that the particles in the top layer will either take away momentum or transfer momentum to the kth layer. Similarly, a k minus 1 layer will also do the same either it will take away momentum or transfer momentum. Okay. So, what we are going to do is that so, uh, so just let us read off this uh, sentence here. So, it says imagine a layer of moving particles each of mass m labeled as kth layer moving with some net drift velocity. So, that let us assume that they are moving with some velocity k. Okay. So, uh, that is the velocity of the kth layer. So, now there is also particles moving on the k plus 1 layer with velocity uh, v k plus 1 and below that uh, v k minus 1. So, the idea is that the particles from a small thickness of d l you see uh, they will uh, they will enter the kth layer. So, the basically the, the particles will get exchanged from these layers. Okay. So, that, that is one, one reason why you can uh, that is one way of modeling viscosity. So, you say that the layers uh, they will talk to each other in this way. So, that means that there will be an exchange of uh, momentum between the layers. Okay. Uh, so, how does that work? So, the momentum entering uh, the kth layer from the k plus 1 layer is, uh, is basically this is the mass. Right, so, rho is the density, A is the area of cross section which is this one and uh, dl is the thickness. So, this, uh, this much of mass times the velocity of the k plus 1 layer will enter the kth layer. So, so, basically this much will enter, this much momentum will enter the kth layer from the k plus 1 layer and this much of momentum will enter the kth layer from the k minus 1 layer. So, the difference uh, the change in momentum is uh, basically what entered minus what was already there. So, this much was already there. Okay. So, the point is that uh, so, if you do this then you will get this type of formula. So, that is the uh, rate of change of momentum 
so is a dp dp is a change in momentum so if you divide by time you will get rate of change of momentum and uh, bottom line is that uh, it is of this type so basically it is of this type so that means that it is proportional to the difference in velocity so we could have actually started from here itself which is more illuminating so the idea is that the um, rate of change of momentum uh, due to internal friction is basically modeled like this that it is uh, the force due to friction is what we are displaying here the internal friction the friction between layers and that is clearly uh, proportional to the uh, uh, difference in the velocity between adjacent layers so uh, in fact uh, there is an even earlier example we we should have uh, mentioned that is if you have a viscous fluid and you drop a, a mass in this fluid it will experience a drag and that drag is basically proportional to uh, the velocity the instantaneous velocity of the uh, fluid so so here it is like that only but except that uh, drag is uh, not uh, with respect to some falling mass and the fluid but one layer of the fluid and another layer of the fluid so the adjacent layers of the fluid so the drag is experienced not by a falling mass but by a layer of the fluid itself so clearly you see if the so this v is clearly the uh, velocity of the uh, so we have assumed the fluid is at rest so v is the velocity uh, i mean it makes sense to talk of the velocity of the falling object so but then if the fluid is also moving this v would be the relative velocity so that means it would be the velocity of the falling object inside the fluid relative to the fluid so that's what it would be in this case so so here uh, you see therefore also here also we should be uh, mentioning the uh, velocity of the uh, so in other words this is uh, minus alpha into uh, vk rel so that means uh, so it is basically so the uh, m d v k by d t uh, is basically just like here it was minus eta v was the drag so if the mass is falling inside a fluid it would be minus eta v uh, v is the instantaneous velocity of the falling object but then if it is so it's falling relative to the fluid so so it's v is strictly speaking the velocity of the falling object relative to the fluid so similarly here it would be uh, minus eta v k rel right so v k rel would be the velocity of the fluid relative uh, so it's the ve velocity of the k th layer relative to the layer that is uh, rubbing it so so it is basically uh, minus eta v k minus v k plus 1 so so that is what i have written here so it is with so it's minus um, eta uh, or alpha or whatever you want to call it uh, times vk rel that means uh, the velocity relative velocity so the velocity of the k kth layer relative to whatever is rubbing against it and what is there are two things rubbing against the kth layer one is k plus 1 the other is k minus 1 so that's why you need two terms here okay so this makes more sense i mean we could have started here itself so now you see uh, now you uh, this all discrete type of description but then these layers are just a mental construct so and they are of course infinitesimally close to one another so what we do is that we instead of writing it as k plus 1 k minus 1 we write v of uh, x plus or minus delta x so that means uh, v of k plus 1 will correspond to Uh, v of x plus delta x and v of k minus one will correspond to v of uh, x minus delta x. So now, when you do that, you will see that this will uh, uh, be, uh, which it will take on the form of the second derivative because uh, that's what that is. So if you do Taylor series in delta x, this will basically become the second derivative of v with respect to x, and you will get this type of equation. okay so the the so this this has the form of a diffusion equation okay so this is uh, something that you should recognize as a diffusion equation so you would have encountered that in when you study diffusion or whatever it is and this eta is now called the coefficient of viscosity okay so of course this was a simple one dimensional analogy so in general uh, you see you would have uh, xyz also so this would become del squared
course the generalization of the second derivative would be Laplacian in three dimensions and similarly velocity instead of being just a one, one number it would be a uh, collection of three numbers corresponding to the three different directions that means Vx, Vy, Vz. So strictly speaking it is actually this okay. So, so in other words the, uh, the rate of change of uh, the meaning the, the acceleration experience the drag acceleration due to internal friction or viscosity is basically proportional to the uh, second derivative of the velocity field. So that means if velocity changes from point to point only then there will be a internal friction okay. So if the point I mean if the fluid is uh, has the same velocity at all points in space there is no internal friction okay. So the internal friction comes because uh, different points in the fluid will move at different uh, velocities then only there is internal friction. So, because the, now uh, there is a new source of uh, uh, this uh, so friction force should also be taken into account. So, you see this, uh, this acceleration of the fluid has many components one is because you have an external pressure so the pressure gradient so del P is basically the pressure gradient. So, pressure gradient will certainly cause acceleration in the fluid then uh, there is a there are body forces if, so if the fluid is um, has mass and it is falling under its own weight it will have acceleration so, so this is that term. So, the first term is because of pressure gradient second term is because it has um, yeah, body force that means it, it falls under its own weight. Therefore, it has acceleration and now of course this is a familiar uh, convective de derivative. So, basically it says that even if uh, so in fact this these two put together is really what the uh, effective derivative is. So, this is something but d by dt of v dot l. So, this is called the convective derivative. So, this should strictly speaking be on that side that makes more sense. So, that is the convective derivative. So, it basically tells you that uh, even if uh, things do not change explicitly with time you can still have. Uh, so, in other words so if you apply pressure gradients in the system it is not necessary that uh, velocity will suddenly start changing with time uh, it could change with space that means that instead of changing with time see normally in a rigid body or point particle mechanics if you apply a force. Uh, pressure gradient is basically a force. So, if you apply a force it will uh, accelerate typically in rigid body it could uh, you know uh, experience that torque for example, if you apply a torque it can angularly accelerate or if you uh, for a point particle it will linearly accelerate whatever it is it will uh, change its velocity with time. But however, uh, in fluids that is not uh, always uh, the case in other words you can be applying a pressure gradient and instead of the velocity of the fluid changing with time something more interesting can happen and that is this uh, velocity can change from point to point in space. So, that will uh, kind of uh, also so in other words that that could be the effect of, of an applied pressure gradient. So, it does not always mean that velocity should change with time ok. So, that is the explanation for this convective derivative. So, that is the physical meaning of convective derivative. So, the new ingredient in this discussion is of course, this one which is the uh, so the, the acceleration that the fluid experiences is now due to another new completely new uh, has a completely new origin namely the internal friction between the layers of the fluid and that is uh, proportional to the uh, Laplace's second derivative of the velocity with respect to uh, position. So, this is of course applicable only for uh, systems where I have uh, somewhere I have assumed implicitly that uh, density is uh, constant because in uh, some discussion it would be uh, you know if you work backwards you will realize that uh, I have been a little blase about this density and I have uh, like subconsciously assumed it is a constant. So, suppose uh, you want to consider more general possibilities uh, 
in which case uh, then you should uh, see the, what is del squared basically it is telling you two special derivatives of, of the velocity. So, now there are two ways of uh, taking two special derivatives of the velocity and still getting a vector one is of course this, the other is this. So, the point is that uh, if the density were tr truly constant uh, we have showed that del the divergence of v0 because of equation of continuity. So, uh, in my uh, till now uh, until this point I had uh, sort of um, implicitly subconsciously assumed that uh, density is strictly constant in which case I had uh, by implication assumed that the divergence of v is 0. So, if I want to relax that uh, little bit uh, unreasonable assumption that density is strictly constant then I should also account for the possibility that there are two types of viscosity that two types of internal drag one is because of del squared v uh, the other term is uh, so it the other term should also involve two derivatives of velocity with respect to space spatial coordinates and that is necessarily this one because you see if the density were uh, well and truly constant then because of equation of continuity divergence of v is 0. So, I would not have had the occasion or need to consider this term at all, but now that uh, I have relaxed the condition that uh, the density is constant, I have to now take into account the possibility that there are two types of or there are going to be two types of friction. One is so, that, so these have names, uh, so this, this is called shear viscosity implying that uh, so, this eta del squared v is called shear viscosity implying that it uh, is really all about uh, layers rubbing against each other it actually is that. Whereas, uh, this eta dash uh, grad del v is called bulk viscosity that indicative of the fact that this viscosity simply comes about uh, because of uh, the density not being constant from point to point. So, there is uh, some kind of a drag in the fluid uh, because of that also. Okay. So, the shear viscosity is because of layers rubbing against each other, the bulk viscosity is because density changes from point to point and the fluid also uh, for that reason also kind of rubs against uh, itself. Okay, uh, so, these two will cause uh, internal friction and uh, this is called viscosity. So, then bottom line is that these types of, uh, so this is the most general type of equation you can write down for a fluid. Okay. So, so, this would be the um, generalization of uh, Euler's equation to include viscosity. Okay. So, now, uh, so, so this together with equation of continuity again needs to be solved in if you want to uh, you know explicitly determine how the fluid is uh, flowing uh, given certain initial conditions. So, now uh, let us uh, switch gears and try and discuss uh, uh, you know see now that we have introduced viscosity we would certainly like to know uh, something about uh, energy. So, in, so we know that for a fact that you know energy in some sense uh, is likely to also dissipate because of this internal friction. So, if there is some kind of kinetic energy you might see that go away. I told you this example of uh, a tumbler of water and you stick your finger in and give it a spin. Uh, so, the water keeps spinning uh, and uh, very soon it stops spinning. The, the reason for that is uh, because layers are rubbing against each other. So, the kinetic energy there is dissipating. So, that is something we would like to uh, examine in some mathematical detail. So, the question is how would you do that? So, firstly uh, let us uh, uh, do the following. Uh, so, let us start with the continued equation which is nothing but d rho by dt plus divergence of rho times v equals 0. So, now this was your continuity equation and uh, let us integrate over space uh, over some volume. So, uh, so imagine omega is the vo uh, some kind of a volume where the fluid is present. 
okay so in that case the uh, so i'm i'm just like giving you a simple procedure by which you can determine flow rates and fluxes and so on so i'm doing that by reminding you of how you uh, do something similar in a more conventional familiar setting and that is from the equation of continuity okay this is uh, i'm i'm actually repeating myself when i'm doing this because i've already explained this earlier so the idea is that you start with the continuity equation and you integrate over some volume and then what it says is, is that if the number of particles or the mass or in this case if rho is your you know mass density it would be n it would be the mass but here is i have assume it's particles but whatever it is say basically it says that if stuff is if the amount of stuff in this volume omega is changing with time the only reason why that could happen is either because stuff is flowing in or flowing out so it cannot be that then there's nothing flowing in and nothing flowing out and yet uh, the amount of stuff in your volume changes with time so if that happens uh, it means that the system is not conserving mass or um, basically number of particles so what this uh, equation of continuity guarantees that that's uh, not a possibility in other words uh, the only reason why is, uh, some region of space can you know accumulate stuff is because you know something is flowing into that region so that's the physical explanation of uh, this procedure of you know integrating the equation of continuity over volume and arriving at this result so now uh, what we wish to do is something similar with the other equation namely the uh, navier stokes equation so that's the uh, generalization of euler's equation uh, including viscosity okay so for this purpose what we are going to do is the following okay uh, so this is your uh, euler equation together with viscosity which is called navier stokes equation so, okay so this is your navier stokes equation so this navier stokes equation is written in this uh, in this way so this is clear what this is so i told you this is the uh, this is the um, explicit time derivative of the velocity plus the um, implicit derivative in the sense that uh, there is a convective derivative so that means that a kind of uh, implied acceleration not because velocity is changing explicitly with time but because it's changing with space which has the simulated effect of an acceleration so that's what the convective derivative is so you see uh, the uh, so so the, i'm not writing anything new it's all, already here so it was here i'm just copy pasting 4.164 so so that's i've written it uh, in a more compact way and this f f external was already there in 4.164 and that's this pressure and this uh, acceleration and so on okay so let's assume that this f external is the sum of all forces uh, uh, external to the fluid for example it could be due to pressure so uh, there are pressure gradients and acceleration g and all that so i lump them all together so here you see there was all this this sort of thing so i lump them all together and uh, i call it uh, that okay so now when you do that you see this uh, this external uh, force can therefore now be written in this way so the, so what this is saying is that so this this is that external force so if i take uh, this term to this side so what this allows me to say is that this f external equals uh, this thing right so, so i have written this explicitly uh, well i have put this inside so um, okay so you you'll have to do some algebra here so if you work this out you will get this okay so if we, if i expand this out i get d rho by dt vj plus rho dvj by dt plus uh, uh, divergence of this thing so if you work this out it will it will amount to this equation so you just substitute uh, explicitly expand this and substitute this here you will get back this equation so it's some amount of algebra so the the cleverness here is to realize that the external force uh, 
which is of course uh, specified once you tell me what pressure gradients are there in the fluid and but it is expressible in terms of so it is like so the force is mass times acceleration type. So, this is some expression for some generalized mass times acceleration ok or rate of change of momentum actually it is rate of change of momentum of the fluid some kind of generalized version of that. So, uh, so bottom line is that that generalized version has that uh, that kind of an effect. So, now and it is per unit volume also ok. So, now what I am going to do is that I am going to integrate this equation with, uh, with respect to volume over some region omega. So, when I do that I get uh, so this this small letter f was uh, force per unit volume and when I integrate over volume this actually becomes force now. So, now this force is basically integral over this with respect to that volume. So, that is what I have defined as momentum uh, of the fluid in that volume ok. So, this is the jth component of the momentum of the fluid in that volume omega. So, what this says is that this external force acting on the volume is rate of change uh, so the explicit uh, time dependence of the momentum with respect to time and how it that changes with time plus something involving a kind of flux. So, in other words you see that this additional term has the appearance of a divergence. So, if I integrate that divergence over volume what I am going to get is a flux. So, using Gauss's theorem this is effectively going to be the uh, some kind of a uh, momentum flux ok. So, that is what that is. So, the reason why I am mentioning all that is that because you see that this uh, the first equation uh, this equation uh, you know the interpretation of uh, the rate of change of the number or the mass of uh, the fluid in some region as a result of uh, you know stuff flowing in and out is uh, comes uh, very readily from the equation of continuity. But uh, what I want to impress upon you is that almost nearly the same interpretation also comes when you do not use the equation of continuity but the other one remember there were two equations one was the equation of continuity and the other one was uh, Navier Stokes. So, the, the equation of continuity was purely kinematic uh, which had nothing to do with uh, the forces uh, acting but the second one involved forces acting. But uh, even then uh, the kinematic component of the Navier Stokes equation which is the right hand side here continues to have that interpretation of uh, the um, ideas that we mentioned uh, when we studied the equation of continuity. So, namely that it has this interpretation that the uh, net forces that are that may or may not be acting on the fluid within some volume omega is going to have two components one is the rate of change of the momentum uh, explicit rate of change of momentum with respect to time of that fluid plus uh, the uh, momentum flux that is either flowing in or out of the fluid. So, you see uh, so this also just like in the earlier case this also has the following interpretation that um, if uh, forces act on the fluid there are two things can happen either so if forces are acting so if this is non zero so if forces are acting two things can happen so either momentum changes with time so the momentum of the fluid within some volume changes with time ok so so usually that's what happens in in the case of say point particles if forces are acting momentum changes with time but you see in fluids something more interesting happens. So, that could certainly happen. So, that means if uh, uh, forces are acting on the fluid momentum of the fluid can certainly change with time. But what is interesting in fluids is that uh, something exact opposite can also happen namely that the momentum does not change with time, but rather the effect of applying a force on the fluid is uh, to say that uh, you know momentum flows into that region from the outside. So, in other words uh, so the the effect of having a force acting on the fluid uh, 
could be that momentum does not change with time, but then uh, to compensate for the fact that uh, forces are acting, uh, momentum of that region changes because uh, momentum is transferred from the outside of that region into that region or expelled from, from inside the region to, to the outside, so one way or the other. So, that could also be the reason uh, why, so if force is acting that could happen or momentum can change with time or both, okay. So, that is precisely the physical meaning of this equation. So, that is what it says. So, if forces are acting, either momentum of that region changes with time uh, and if it does not, so the fact that forces are acting is taken into account by either expelling momentum from that region or sucking in momentum from the surroundings, okay. So, I just wanted to impress upon you the uh, great similarity that exists between continuity equation and Navier-Stokes equation when you interpret it in this way. So, in both cases uh, it has the interpretation of uh, something changing with time because stuff is either getting sucked in or, or being expelled from some region. So, now uh, let us, so, so what we have considered, so there are two types of transfer we have considered till now, one is mass transport. Uh, originating from the equation of continuity. So, this tells you uh, how much mass uh, enters or exits some region and how that is related to uh, the flux of matter that is exiting or entering some region. The second type of transport is momentum transport. So, where we have shown uh, using this Navier-Stokes that the forces acting on, on some region is basically has the effect of either changing the momentum of that region or it has the effect of expelling momentum from that region or sucking in momentum into that region. So, you have momentum transport in the second instance, in the first instance it is matter transport and in the third instance is what we are going to discuss now and that is energy transport, you see. So, energy is uh, basically in more square of velocities, okay. So, now uh, let us define something called the kinetic energy density which is defined as half instead of mv squared it is rho v squared implying that it is, uh, so if it is mv squared it would be energy, if it is rho v squared it is energy density because uh, rho is m by v. Okay, so, now having defined kinetic energy density in this way, let us see how that changes with time and uh, so similarly we expect to be able to write uh, the rate of change of uh, kinetic energy as also uh, related to some kind of kinetic energy flux that is either getting sucked into that region or expelled from the region. So, that is the expectation, so that is the reason why we are uh, doing this exercise. Okay, so, having defined the kinetic energy in this way, let us go ahead and find how it changes with time. So, if you uh, take the derivative with respect to time, you get uh, two results. One is that uh, you get d rho by dt which I have written as minus grad of uh, rho v. So, so, you can just work this out. This I have just combined uh, the um, uh, equation of continuity and uh, Navier-Stokes combination is required here, okay. So, when you work this out, you as I think I will leave this to exercises. So, you will have to work out the details. What you have to do is you have to find the rate of change of the kinetic energy density. So, that will involve see d by dt of k will involve d rho by dt and also uh, d by dt of v squared. But then d by dt of v squared is like v dot dv by dt. But then dv by dt is something we have written down earlier, is not it? Because uh, dv by dt is basically all this this sort of thing. So, uh, so you can, you will have to combine all that and when you do this, you get this answer. So, the rate of change of kinetic energy density is a bunch of uh, these terms. Okay, so, here too now we are going to do the same familiar set of uh, transformation and procedures, namely we are going to integrate the kinetic energy density over some volume. And when you integrate over a volume, you get kinetic energy from density. If you integrate over volume, you get energy. So, if you go ahead and um, do that uh, integration, okay. So, uh, before we do that, we will have to make some simplifying assumptions. So, let us assume that this term is 0, okay. So, so let us assume this is 0 for now. 
why we want to assume this is 0 is because uh, it will become less illuminating the interpretation become less illuminating if you have bulk viscosity in your equation. So, we just want to be able to give you a sense in, in which uh, you know you, you just want to get a feel for how things are. We are not really using this, uh, this course is not about you know studying fluid dynamics in great detail, it is just about giving you a flavor for the field theoretic aspects of various uh, topics that are encountered in physics. So, remember uh, one should never lose sight of the title of this course and there is dynamics of classical and quantum fields and introduction. So, it is only an introduction and it is only meant to study the field aspect of various physics topics that you encounter, not uh, study each topic in great practical detail. So, because th that is our goal, I am entitled to ignore those aspects that are likely to not be very illuminating when it comes to the sort of discussions I want to make. So, uh, so specifically here I want to discuss kinetic energy transport for that it is sufficient to ignore uh, this bulk viscosity. So, if I use, uh, so now imagine that I only consider situations where the fluid is incompressible in which case divergence of V is 0. Okay. So, if that is the case then uh, uh, clearly I can do the following and I will also assume that uh, the, um, so if I integrate over a volume this is going to involve the surfaces. So, this will be the divergence of something over some surface. Okay. So, I am going to assume that uh, those uh, surfaces are uh, far away so that the velocity on those surface is 0. So, I can ignore this. So, in that case I only consider these two terms. So, so you see the rate of change of uh, kinetic energy is now uh, only determined by this term and this term. Okay. So, now, now we can interpret. Okay. So, so this omega is pretty much over the entire fluid. So, where uh, velocities on the boundaries of the fluid are 0. Okay. So, so the fluid is enclosed inside that boundary. So, on the boundary there is no fluid. So, this velocity is 0. So, this omega uh, like completely en encloses the fluid. So, in which case this, this term is like uh, fully 0 because it is the uh, volume integral of the divergence which is the surface integral of some normal component where it is 0 there. So, now you see you can go ahead and uh, simplify this. So, if you simplify this, this will come out as the divergence of something and uh, that something is, uh, so the bottom line I am trying to say is that you can uh, interpret this term like this. Okay. So, and why is that? Because you can, uh, you can do it like this and you can write in this way. Okay. So, if you write it like this, then this, this term by integration by parts. So, you can integrate by parts and when you integrate by parts, this, this derivatives get, gets carried over into this and you, you get these results. Okay. So, bottom line is that you can, uh, so this equation has the interpretation of, uh, so this term is the work done uh, on the fluid due to the external forces. Okay. And this is the uh, this is the rate at which the uh, energy is dissipated. Okay, the first term is the rate at which energy is dissipated uh, per unit time due to viscosity. So, in fact, you can convince yourself that this is negative. Okay, so this term will be actually negative if you integrate by parts. You will convince yourself that this is negative. So, it has the uh, interpretation of uh, the energy that is being dissipated due to viscosity. So, the rate of change of kinetic energy in certain in a certain volume is basically the energy that is being dissipated in that volume plus the work done due to the external forces. So, these are the this is the work done because F external is the force per unit volume and force times velocity is uh, the power which is the rate at which work is being done because that is the rate of change of kinetic energy. So, this is F external with a lower case is force per unit volume and that is integrated over volume. So, it is force, force times velocity is power, power is basically the amount of work done per unit time. 
due to the external forces and this is the uh, so naturally so you see the left hand side is the rate at which kinetic energy is increasing in that volume. So that can be because of two reasons. One is because work is being done on the fluid by some external force or if it is uh, if kinetic energy is disappearing with time it is because of uh, viscosity uh, and so that is important. So I told you that example if you take a tumbler stick your finger in and give it a spin uh, the, the fact that it stops spinning after a while is because of this term ok. So, so basically it says the viscosity forces that uh, spinning water to slowly come to a halt. So, so that is what the, the interpretation of 4.174 is. So, it is basically kinetic energy transport. So, let me summarize what I have explained till now and that is uh, basically three types of transport and that is uh, the mass transport which tells you that the change in the number of particles or the mass of a fluid in some region is related to the flux of matter flowing in and out. The second uh, equation tells you that uh, forces are acting on some region of the fluid it's either because momentum changes with time or momentum flows into that region or uh, gets expelled from that region. And thirdly it says if kinetic energy of some region changes with time it is either because work is done on that region by some external force or because kinetic energy disappears due to friction internal friction between layers and that is this term. So, so I have successfully explained uh, all three types of uh, transport that is matter transport, momentum transport and energy transport in the fluid. So, I am going to stop now in the next class I am going to discuss the important subtopic of turbulence ok. So, that will conclude our discussion of uh, fluid mechanics and then we will move on to some other topics ok. Thank you. Mm -hmm.